Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kristen and if you're new here, this is a corner of the internet where I come at you every other week or so and share what I've been making. I do a lot of knitting, I do a lot of crochet, I do a heck of a lot of quilting these days. If that's something you're into, you're multi craftual you are in a good place. And to that I say gather around, grab a cup of something, and let's get into things. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping notes. Uh, first, I just want to say thank you so, so much to everyone who stopped by my shop update a few weeks ago. I listed the yarn kits that I dyed for Helen Stewart's upcoming 24 Birds Mystery Knit Along. They, guys, they sold out like hotcakes. Uh, my mind was completely blown. Thank you, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Um, still pinching myself. And yes, I am planning to have another shop update with a kit restock. I'm not sure when I'm gonna get around to publishing this video, but I do plan on popping more kits in the shop this Saturday, March 9th at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So uh, if you were hoping to get your mitts on a kit and missed out last time, this weekend's your chance. And if they sell out again and there's still a demand for it, I will endeavor to dye another round, even though the mystery knit along cast on date is this March 29th. But just a little heads up there. Uh, again, please do sign up for my newsletter. I'll link to it down in the description box below, along with everything else that I mentioned in this episode. But yes, if you wanna stay looped in and be notified as to when you can expect more kits or what to expect in all of my shop updates, Bull and Vine Yarns, then the newsletter is the place to be notified about that type of stuff. So uh, anyway, yes, I think, I believe that is it for, for news. Um, I've, got, I've got some really fun stuff to share with you this week, guys. Uh, I've got some knitting, I've got a lot of quilting, so let's, let's dive in. All right, let's talk knitting because <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, you might've seen that I pulled a project out of deep hibernation. I cast this project on, I wanna say a little over two years ago uh, when Dennis and I were still living in Brooklyn, if you can believe it. And do you remember this? Do you remember this this project? Yeah, this is my Don't Look Up pullover. Um, this is a sweater pattern that I am reverse engineering. So there's no pattern for it. I'm not planning on publishing a pattern, but um, I had been watching the movie Don't Look Up. It, it had Jennifer Lawrence in it, Leonardo DiCaprio. I think it was on Netflix. Jennifer Lawrence's character was wearing a sweater that I had recognized from Target. And I remember shopping in Target and looking at the sweater and thinking it was cool. And I was very tempted to purchase it, but then, I, you know, lots of colors happening in it. And I was like, mm, maybe, you know, I love it, but I don't think I'm gonna wear it. So I kind of, you know, let that go to the wayside. But when I watched the movie Don't Look Up and I saw her wearing the sweater, I was kind of kicking myself for not picking up the sweater. But then, but then my knitter brain kicked in and I'm like, you know what? I can totally make that myself. So I took to my computer, opened up an Excel sheet or Google Sheets, whatever you wanna call it, and pulled up the photo from the internet from Target's website. And I kind of like analyzed the color work in the, in the yoke and the sleeves. And I was able to just kind of reverse engineer or create a, um, a color work chart just by looking at the sweater. And I have been getting questions from people asking if I'm going to be publishing a pattern for this sweater. And the answer is no, I'm not. Um, only because of copyright and you know, I don't know who designed this sweater. Like whether or not this chart is an exact replica, I have no idea. Again, I'm just improvising and Re doing my best to recreate the the color work motif in the sweater that I that I saw and admired. So um, that's yeah, that's what I'm doing with this. So I cast it on. I got maybe to the ribbing of the body, and then I let it languish. I let it fall to the wayside. I don't know what happened. Maybe it was the move. I don't know. But I, this sweater just got banished to my UFO pile, my unfinished objects pile, and sat. It sat for two years in my closet over here. And last weekend, I was doing a little bit of tidying, pulled out, you know, the, the project bag has been, been in the closet. I've, I see the project bag all the time. I've opened the project bag up and have thought about working on it, but only until then did I feel the urge to pick this back up and work on it again. I mean, it's, I, I can't, I can't explain the method to my madness here, guys, or what inspires me to pick something up again after a long hiatus. Yeah, so, but as I say all the time, I'm not questioning it. I'm just going with the flow. As you can see, I've made quite a bit of progress. 
<laughs> so finished the body and now I'm on the sleeves and the sleeves. I didn't realize this, this until recently um, that the sleeve motif is slightly different compared to the yoke. It's a little, it's a little truncated, if that makes any sense. It's um, a little abbreviated, I would, I would say. Um, but that's the other thing that that happened. So not only did I stop working on this, but in cleaning up my Google Drive, I inadvertently deleted the chart. The photo of the model wearing this sweater on Target's website isn't there anymore, so I had to do a little little detective work and I found some people selling this sweater on on eBay. So I was able to kind of like zoom in on some of their photos, their listing photos and recreate the chart from scratch. And it's there. It's if you go to the project page on my Ravelry uh, project page for this project, there's a link to the chart. So if you want to take a crack at, you know, copycatting me and, you know, making the sweater for yourself, I used Elizabeth Zimmerman's percentage system to figure out my sizing. And all that to say that while I did knit a gauge swatch, I did use Elizabeth Zimmerman's sweater percentage system to figure out, you know, my cast on number, my stitch counts and everything. I've used it in the past with success, but for this project in particular, I don't know what's up, what happened, but this thing is huge. It's huge on me, guys. I don't know if you can tell, but it's it's big. It's really, really big. Um, I was aiming for, you know, because I have a 32 inch uh, circumference bust and I was aiming for a 40 inch bust with the sweater just to give myself a little bit of ease there. Um, this, I believe, has a lot more ease than I anticipated. So, you know, I'll try and insert some B-roll of me trying this on so you can see for yourself, but I don't know if you can tell with the sleeves, I can fit two and a half of my arms in one of these sleeves. It is redonkulous. And um, I am decreasing over here just, you know, to get myself down to the cuff size. Um, but it's, again, I, I am no sweater designer, my friends. I've designed shawls, I've designed hats in the past, but um, when it comes to sweaters, I, I have yet to dip my toes into that genre of pattern design, if you will. When it comes to designing sweaters for myself, I'm, I'm willing, I'm willing to experiment, trial and error, and lay, may the chips fall where they may, and this certainly does not fit me well at all. <laughs> so, you know, I, when, when I realized that, I was tempted to kind of like throw this back into hibernation, but what what good would that do? I've come this far, I may as well just finish it, and I've decided, you know, well, it doesn't fit me well, while it's swimming on me, it's just this big orange blob on me, it's just gonna be one of those sweaters that I chuck on when I just, I wanna get cozy. I don't care what I look like, I just wanna get cozy and snuggly and stay warm, and that's, I think, what this sweater is gonna become. So, anyway, yes. A little bit of a tale of woe here, but uh, the my don't look up pullover, improv pullover is, is back in action and we're gonna finish her. And for some reason, I don't know why you guys are so excited about it. Um, I'm excited about it too, guys, I'm not gonna lie. It, it was a labor of love and I'm proud of myself for just getting this far with it. And who knows, maybe down the line, I'll tweak, the, tweak my notes or whatever and create another version of this that will fit me better, so. Uh, the yarn, I should talk about the yarn. Uh, the yarn is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Superwash. Uh, I'm using three different colors. So the main color here is persimmon, 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 persimmon. I'll have to look it up on Google. And then for the contrasting colors, I'm using this pink, which is rouge and black. And I should also mention that I'm holding the contrasting colors together with mohair. So it's all knit picks. Um, you know, I'm using black mohair held together with the black yarn and pink mohair held together with the, with the pink yarn. So, you know, FYI. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much all I want to say about this, this project so far. I mean, yeah, making, making a lot of progress with it. You know, will I have it finished by the next episode? We shall see, but you know, this is pretty much what I've been working on since finishing my Carillon shawl and the last episode. Uh, the other project that I've been working on is doo -doo -doo, my Oslo hat by Petite Knit. And yeah, this I've just been picking up intermittently working on it. Again, it's like it's like a sock. I'm just knitting around and around and around in stockinette. Um, I did get together with a friend this week, so I had a chance to work on it then. Um, but here's where we are. And this thing is, it's got some weight to it, you know? <laughs> and I think that's because of the alpaca content in there. It's very, you know, alpaca, 
it's very drapey. It's got, it's got some weight to it, if you will. And the yarn that I'm using is by the Fiber Co. It's their, it's, I believe it's a newer yarn line of theirs. It's um, Aaron and, Aaron Ampersand. I don't know, it's, it's, it's just like Aaron and the symbol Ampersand. I will, I will link to it down below. But it's a really, really lovely blend of wool and alpaca, 50-50. Um, here it is, just a really beautiful dusty mauve colorway and I'm holding it together or was holding it together, marling it together with um, some Lang mohair. So, you know, some lace weight mohair silk yarn with very, very subtle flecks of silver Stellina in it. Um, I don't, yeah, you can't even, you really have to look at this hat close up to see the sparkle. Uh, it's, it's that subtle. But unfortunately, while I'm on the second ball of the Fiber Co, I did run out of yarn with the with the Stellina mohair. So I, you know, I, I really wasn't looking forward to splurging on a second skein, a $20 second skein, mind you, <laughs> which, you know, in the right project, it makes sense. But for this project, a hat where, you know, again, you can barely see the sparkle, I really wasn't looking forward to to spending that much on another another skein of it. So, you know, when I pulled out my my Don't Look Up pullover, I realized that I I had an extra ball of Knit picks mohair, so that is what I'm using instead. And it, you, you cannot tell. You cannot tell. I mean, from here, can you tell? No, you cannot. Mischief managed. Very, very happy about that. And again, the pattern is the Ossel hat by Petite Knit. This is her original Ossel hat pattern, which calls for DK weight. And while the yarn that I'm using by Fiberco is quote unquote Aran, I, you know, again, I'm giving it a pass for DK because I don't. I've seen, I've seen other Aran weight yarns and. Yeah, I, I feel like this is a little bit thinner than what actual true Aran is. I don't know. Maybe it plumps up after you, after you wash it, after you block it. I don't know, but I'm giving it a pass. As for quilting, I, I've been doing quite a lot of quilting. Uh, in the last episode, I shared some baby quilts, two baby quilts that I made for my cousin. Um, she had her baby shower last weekend and I gifted the baby quilts to her. She loves them. So that was a success, yay! And now I get to focus on quilting some quilt tops that need to get quilted. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm looking right, like right behind the camera is my sewing table with my sewing machine on it. And I've got my shadow play quilt under the machine right now. And it's it's being quilted. It's gonna be, this is gonna be a labor of love, guys. I don't, I don't know how long it's gonna take me to quilt, but I'm doing it. Unlike the baby quilts where I use the walking foot to quilt the quilt, for this quilt, my shadow play quilt, I'm going to be free motion quilting. And I have to be honest, I, I still need practice when it comes to free motion quilting. I, I still feel very willy-nilly, little, like not very much in control. I mean, it helps to have the gloves with the traction. That, that definitely helps. But I think free motion quilting on this quilt will be really great practice for me because I'm actually quilting it the way that it's been quilted in the book, Kate Fassett's Quilts in Ireland. Um, so I'm trying to copy, mimic that motif where, where you look at the, the fabric that I used for the sashing, the motif has these little oval shapes. It's Kay Fassett's um, Aboriginal dot motif. So basically I'm just free motion quilting over those ovals. So I'm just following the lines as best as I can, you know, doing two little loops over and then hooking it to the next little loop. They're, they almost look like little eggs, you know? So I'm making, you know, two little circles around one egg, looping up to another egg, making two little circles and so on and so forth. So I'm having a lot of fun with that. Granted, this is gonna take me quite some time. It is a big quilt. Um, so I've, I've certainly got my work cut out for me when it comes to quilting this thing. Um, but again, like I say, you put it in an audiobook, a podcast, and you just tune out the rest of the world and go. So that's, that's my game plan for this. Um, and yeah, this pro again, like the shadow play quilt by Kay Fassett, it's way out of my comfort zone when it comes to color, but oh my gosh, it was so fun to make. It was fun to deviate from the usual muted shades that I typically gravitate towards and just play with color a little bit. It definitely, you know, yeah, it broadens, broadens your horizons, if you will. So anyway, that, that's what's currently under my, my sewing machine at the moment, but between between finishing the baby quilts and working on the shadow play quilt, I decided to do a little, give myself a little palette cleanser, if you will. So I, you probably saw this, again, if you follow me on Instagram, you, you saw this already. 
Um, but a couple weeks ago, maybe two weekends ago, I went to Joanne Fabrics, treated myself to a little fabric haul. And again, like this is just a personal challenge for myself. There's nothing wrong with pre-cuts, but I'm trying to wean myself away from relying on pre-cuts for my quilts, just as a way to challenge myself to get more comfortable picking and choosing my own um, fabric color palettes, if you will, for, for quilt projects. So when I went to Joanne Fabrics, that's, that's kind of what I did. That was my intention. So I just perused the aisles and pulled bolts from the shelf and just kind of like created a little collection of fabrics that I thought went together. When I brought all this fabric home, I felt so inspired. I wanted to work with it right away. And I went, I went into my little growing, my tiny but mighty growing quilting library and picked up, picked out this book. Uh, it's called Simple Whatnots 3, A Third Serving of Satisfyingly Scrappy Quilts by Kim Deal. I flipped through this book and stumbled on, um, what is it, this pattern right here. It's called The Midnight Quilt. And as soon as I saw it, I was just like, oh my God, I totally wanna make that. And I looked at the fabric requirements and yeah, I was like, I have enough fabric. I can make I can make this quilt. But then I looked at the measurements and it's only 20 and a half inches by 20 and a half inches. So it's a tiny, it's a teeny tiny quilt, my friends. But at the same time, you know, I, I was hoping to use the fabric that I picked up from Joanne to make a bigger quilt, but I got really excited about this project and I was really eager to work with the fabric. So I was just like, you know what? Let's do it, let's do it, let's make the quilt. I can always use the leftover fabric to make something larger, something scrappier, what have you. And here we go. This is the Midnight Quilt, my friends. It's finished, it's done, it's bound. I love it so much, so much, guys. This makes me so happy. Um, yeah, and it's, it's a tiny wall hanging and I already have plans for it. In my craft room, there's um, a dormer. It's like just a slanted piece of wall that is right above my, my desk where I edit edit these videos where I just hang out and knit sometimes. I think this is gonna go on that wall. It's just gonna hang above me like like some stars. It'll be really fun. Um, yeah, so uh, when it came to quilting, I did use my walking foot. Uh, here is what it looks like on the back. I don't know if you can see, but it is really cool. You can do so much with a walking foot and it kind of takes the, the anxiety for me at least, it takes the anxiety out of free motion quilting because yeah, free motion quilting, you're on your own. It's the wild west. Unless you have full control and you know exactly what you're doing and you have a lot of practice under your belt, I just feel like, ah, what am I doing? <laughs> Whereas with the walking foot, I feel like it's good training wheels. Like the shadow play quilt, I basically mimicked some of the, the, the quilting lines from the quilting treatment in the book and then there were some cases where I just improvised. Um, but yeah, they it kind of looks like constellations, you know? That's what I, my stitch lines remind me of. Um, yeah, so this was, this was really fun to put together. It took me three days. It could have taken me even less time had I had a, you know, big block of time to work on this. But um, yeah, three days I was done with it and just a really fun, quick, clever project too. I mean, this right, this block right here, this is a flying goose, a flying geese, quilt block and I thought the construction of it was really clever because you are, let me see if I can hold this up better. Um, so yeah, you make one quilt block, this one in the center and then you tack on two rectangles on either side and once you have a full rectangle, you tack on a half square triangle and you have a flying goose block. It's again, mind blowing perpetually, you know, impressed with how clever quilting can be. Um, yeah, and then I signed it on the back. I basically just signed it with my name, the date, and where it was made, Port Chester, New York. Um, and I used, again, just um, a fine Sharpie marker. It lasts through the wash, and it's just a really quick, simple, easy way to, to sign your quilts. Um, and I wanted to say thank you, thank you so much to everybody who left suggestions as to how I should sign the baby quilts that I made. Um, there were so many great suggestions. I, again, just simply went with a fine point Sharpie marker along, actually I signed it along the, the binding. I wrote uh, Made With Love, Cousin Kristen, and 
the date and some little little hearts. So yeah, that that worked out really well. So I just want to say thank you so much to everybody for your wonderful suggestions. That's that's where I, what I went with. And that, my friends, I believe, is all the creative content that I have to share with you this week. Thank you so much, as always, for hanging out with me. Again, if you're new here and you haven't already, consider liking and subscribing down below. I put out videos for your viewing pleasure every other week. And until the next video, happy making, and I'll see you soon. Bye.